finally made a move that hopefully will get them a few more wins this year. They traded for the number one pick, and it will be y'all have to look at y'all. <laughs> they traded for the number one pick, and hopefully the Sixers will get a few more wins. But one thing that has caught my attention during this entire process is a young man from the University of California at Los Angeles uh, by Ball is his last name. Yes. And then you saw Ball, and he's been a wonderful player. He's been someone who led his team in the NCAA tournament. But even more importantly, we were able to meet his father, LeVar Ball. And he came out with this new brand, the Big Baller brand. And he charged $500 for a pair of sneakers. And all along, I hear people saying, why is he always talking? Why is he always on television? Why is he always so engaged with his son? Why does he always have something to say? Why is he so bombastic? Why does he speak with such bravado? And it's amazing to me that after all of the years of hearing the sad song of the African-American man who is not present in the lives of his children, we meet a man who is unashamedly standing for his son, and then everyone now has something else to say as if that is not his fault. As if I'm supposed to leave my young child out there for the wolves. As if his son is now 35 years old. Last I checked, I needed my daddy when I was 19. Because if he wasn't there for me at 19, I may not be standing in front of you at 38. It's amazing to me that everybody has rules about how you ought to be engaged in the lives of your children. But let him not have been there. Every news station would have been how does it feel to grow up without a father. Let him not have been there. It would have been, well, you know, black men don't take care of their children. Let him not have been there. The narrative would have been different. But now that he is there saying, whoever might come, this is my child. You can do what you want to do with your own, but God gave him to me. My father gave me one of the greatest gifts anyone could ever give a person. He believed in me. Amen. My father is worth more than a hundred school teachers. Because if all you do are learning in school, then you are uneducated, my friend. There are things that you have to learn that no one's going to teach you in second period. There are some things that you need to learn that nobody's going to tell you when the end of the day has come. There are some things you don't learn when you ride the bus to get to school. Some things right. gotta come when you get home. Yeah. And it happens when a father is engaged in the lives of his children. Yeah. I'm very intentional about saying his children. And please don't take this the wrong way, but Father's Day is not single Mother's Day. Amen. There's an idea that says, well, since we are not married or together, that I will take the place of the father, and therefore the child doesn't need to have a relationship with the father. It's the farthest thing from the truth. Amen. There is Mother's Day, and there is Father's Day. And today is the day that we need to lift up those men that are in our path. Those men that are there that are helping us to be greater than we've ever thought we could be. I'm so glad that it wasn't just my daddy that raised me. I'm so glad that I learned some things from a litany of folks they call Houston. There was Gordon Houston. He didn't have a middle name. And when I asked my granddaddy why you don't have a middle name, he said, I don't need one. Because you either know me as Gordon or you know me as Mr. Houston. That's all there is to be. And I'm glad that I was able to come from a line of a man named Andrew Houston. A short man and his wife was about nine inches taller than him, but nobody messed with Papa Houston. For he owned his own ground in Mississippi when nobody was owning ground. And he had his own crops, and he realized he passed down generation to generation. Don't always be asking, go out and get something for yourself. 
I'm so glad there's a line of men who invested in my life. However, there are some who have bastardized this understanding of what it means to be a father, who have cheapened the God-ordained enterprise to its lowest form and its basis level by believing that you do not have to be engaged in the lives of your children, that you can just make babies and then leave them to the elements. That you can just make babies and walk away as if it's the woman's fault. And then you hear all of the stories that come out. Well, I thought you were on the pill. Oh, see, I talk about the reality of things that I know. I talk about the realities of things that I've heard. Of things that I've seen. I, maybe you want me to make it into something different, but my eyes can't not see what I've already seen. My ears can't not hear what I've already heard. I can't not experience what I've already experienced. And I've seen too many young ladies and young men on the streets of Philadelphia and across the urban centers of this country who have come to me with tears in their eyes and they don't know what they are going to do. And it's almost as if the young man says, it's not my fault. Yeah. Master P said that I do that. <laughs> This understanding that says, I can make a baby, but I don't have to take care of a baby. I can do what grown folks do, but when it's time to man up like a grown man, I get nervous and scared. There are some who have cheapened this enterprise of being a father. But I got some real ones in the congregation today. Oh, I think there are some of y'all that know what I'm talking about. Those that didn't run away when it got hard, and I know it got hard. Because sometimes raising children is hard. Sometimes being engaged, whether it's your wife or your baby mom, it is difficult to be in those relationships because sometimes you don't see eye to eye and folks start trying to do things that will hurt the other. But I tell you, we do not have the ability to walk away from that. We have a responsibility to stay. Oh, I know they might have hurt your feelings. Well, guess what? Hurt feelings happen in life. You gotta keep on moving forward. There are too many folks that find themselves paralyzed because their feelings got hurt. But let me tell you, there's one or two of you that know what I'm talking about. If you've lived long enough, you know that sometimes they might hurt your feelings, but you gotta keep on. And so y'all can look back on your father and remember what your father impressed in your life. And maybe it wasn't uh, him saying a whole lot to you. See, there are some fathers generations ago, they didn't do all that kissing and hugging and all those different things that everyone's doing these days. They didn't do a lot of fixing meals and laying out clothes. They didn't do these different things. And maybe he didn't never said he loved you, but he got up every day and made sure he provided for you. I tell you right now, what have we learned from our fathers in our midst? For we are reaping the fruits, beloved of a generation of fathers who have been displaced. Now you can say they've been displaced because of the prison industrial complex. I'm not going to add up all the reasons why some have been displaced, but you saw what happened on Shelton Avenue a few weeks ago that a group of 12-year-old boys walked up to a man who couldn't defend himself and decided the thing to do was to hit him in the face. And now they're going to find themselves in West Philadelphia at the Youth Juvenile Justice Center because they decided that they wanted to do something that they were big and bad enough to do. Half the time, and i got to admit it to you, Sister Vera, I walked down the street asking, please, I wish you would come over here right now. <laughs> talking to me all the time. All right. Sometimes daddy had to take me in the back right. and dish out some business. Yeah. And I learned really quick that I didn't want no more business. So I have a testimony in the house. And somebody understands what I'm talking about. My father-in-law used to ask the children, do you want to go to the bathroom? They say, no, daddy. I don't want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> 
they say the same thing. In this one, had a baby. He had more kids. Got old and died. And that repeats itself for a good two chapters. This one, had a baby. Had some more kids. Got old and died. But in the text we see here, we meet Noah's great-grandfather. See, you must understand that the line from Adam all the way through Jesus can be tracked through the scriptures. You can see the moment where God intervened and wanted to make salvation available. And it's in chapter 5 that we meet a man named Enoch. Now look at verse 19. Right here it says that Jared, Enoch's father. So this is Noah's great, great grandfather, Jared. Jared lived to be 962 years old. Now, my father tells me every day, I'm 74 out, I'm an old man. I pulled out the scripture the other day, well, you didn't get to 900 yet, Dad. <laughs> For Jared was 962 years old when he died. But he had a son named Enoch. And we don't know a whole lot about Enoch, but we meet this man who had a father who lived 900 years, and in verse 22, we get a glimpse of his life, and it says that he walked with God. The only thing we know about Enoch are his age, and that he walked with God. You recall what the book of Amos told us, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? Have you ever been in a space where you don't have any intention on agreeing with God and what he would have you to do and you find it uncomfortable to come into the house of God because you've already made up in your mind, I'm not going to do what the Lord would have me to do and it gets uncomfortable to you after a while, but only when you consent to what the Lord has had for you to do, do you realize that you can be back in relationship yeah. with God? All we know about Enoch is that he walked with God. Amen. And it says right here, 300 years after he became father of Methuselah, he had other sons and daughters. All, all the days of Enoch were 365 years. That doesn't seem right. What in the world are we talking about in the text that Jerry, my father, lived to be over 900 years, but now you say to me that I walk with the Lord, but I only get 300 years. This doesn't seem fair, God. If I've done all that you told me to do, if I've gone everywhere you told me to go, if I've forgiven all that you told me to forgive, if I love even when it hurt me to love, it does not seem fair that you would call me out of this life 600 years after, 600 years before my father. I think there are some of us here right now who know what I'm talking about. You've been seeking to serve the Lord with truth and gladness. You've been seeking to be with God and do what God would have you to do. And sometimes when you put into practice what the Lord would have you to do and things still don't go the way that you think they ought to go, you're left with your hands open, with your eyes to the sky, and you say, God, this is not fair. God, why are you doing this to me? God, why did my father have to die so young? Why is my daddy not around? Why do my father and I not see eye to eye? What is going on? This does not seem fair. God, why don't my children listen when I want them to listen? Why do you make it so hard on me, Lord? And you're left with eyes to the sky saying, God, this ain't fair. This isn't right. And in a soft, still voice, the Lord speaks to you and says, My child, my ways are not your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. For the reality is when you walk with the Lord like Enoch, walk with the Lord. You can then internalize what the hymn writers said and they said, he walks with me. Yeah. 
and, and Jesus rises to us and says, he talks with me. And then he says, he tells me that I am his own. For the joy that we share as we as we tarry there, no other has ever known. But you can't know the sweet nothings of God if you never take time to walk with the Lord. And when you walk all the time, you can't do all the talking. Sometimes you got to listen to what the Lord has to say. See, there's some of y'all, hey, the first date's not working out for you because you're doing too much talking. Oh, I helped you right there. Say hallelujah. Oh, that's some going. I helped you right there. You don't get that from Match.com, BlackPeopleMeet.com. You don't get that from any of OK Cupid. None of it. I tell you, I helped you out right there. Let me stop here for a second. If you're going on a first date, here it is. Ask a lot of questions about them and let them talk. Yeah. And then after the date is over, they'll say, oh, they listen so well. I helped you. <laughs> but you can't hear from the Lord unless you take time to walk with the Lord. Yeah. Fathers, we can't lead in a way that we don't know where to go. We can't talk about things that we haven't heard from the master. We can't lead in the direction if we haven't done it ourselves, but there are always people who want to tell us what to do, but they've never walked down that road by themselves. They always have things to say or recommendations to give, but when you ask them how they know, they can't give you any date or time. But I thank God for folks like Minister Cook when he tells me what it was to go into the Navy as a black man. I thank God for those who were able to tell me what it is to walk around with polio in their legs and now can walk on strong feet. I thank God for folks that got some skin in the game. So that when they tell me, well, maybe you should do this, I can listen and receive it because they walk where I'm walking and talk what I'm talking. It says that he not walked with the Lord. But notice in the text, in the text, we see right here in, in verse 20, 22, it says that as he walked with the Lord, and we know that Amos said that how can you walk together unless you agree, and we see right here that after 300 years, he had his child, Methuselah, and he had other sons and daughters. So the years 365, but notice after he had his children, Verse 24, he walked with God. Everyone say, walk with God. Oh, One of the greatest failings of our time is this understanding that after we get great responsibility, we stop doing the things that we did to get us where we are. We change up where we have learned to grow. See, he walked with God before he had kids. And then after he had kids, I must believe, Deaconess Hazel, that he spent some more time walking with the Lord. See, everybody's buying these books, Sister Vivian, what to expect when you're expecting. <laughs> Jennifer found out she's having two baby girls yeah. in her stomach. She yeah. found out that she called me, and she made a big production of it, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the story, so I'll tell you the story. I don't mind. So she, she took the envelope to the restaurant. She told the waiter, waiter, if they're boys, bring me this type of dessert. <laughs> If they're girls, bring me this type of dessert. <laughs> and so the, the strawberry shortcake was for girls, and I'm going to get what the boys deserve. Was. And so it comes out. She sees the strawberry shortcake. She looks at it, and she says, ah! And Ron is taping her the whole time. <laughs> but see, it's one thing to follow the Lord before you had the children. But you better make sure you walk with the Lord after you got some kids. <laughs> Because it's going to come some days that you just want to grab them and shake them a little bit. It's going to come some days they're going to push you to the nth degree of your patience level. And you got to say to yourself, what can I do to be the best father that I can be? Maybe I ought to talk to the Lord. How did he deal with me when I was running around crazy doing everything I shouldn't have been doing? How did he deal with me? What did the Lord do when I was cursing up a storm, drinking 40 ounces on the block? What did the Lord do with me when I found myself with different women night in and night out? How did the Lord deal with me? Maybe that's 
how I want to deal with my kids. But you can't know that unless you walk with the Lord. You can't learn those things unless you unless you walk with the Lord. Well, he not walk with God. It wasn't right. He only got 365 years and his daddy got 900. It wasn't right. And he only got 365 years and his, his son was the oldest living man in the Bible. It wasn't right that all these things took place. But the text tells us that what is lost on man is seen and shown and blessed by God. Because God said, oh, I didn't miss the 365 years you were praying. I didn't miss the 365 years you were offering sacrifices. I didn't miss the 365 years that you were praying for those that despitefully used you. I didn't miss the 365 years when you were giving of all that you had to bless somebody else in your community. They did not miss me the 365 years of you forgiving those that despitefully used you. I didn't miss the 365 years of you giving all that you had. And so since I didn't miss it, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it so that you never have to see death. Oh, you see what the text said. The text says that his daddy was 900 some years old. It says that he was 300 and 65 years old. It said he walked with the Lord before he had kids. It said he walked with the Lord after he had kids. And the next verse tells you that God decided, I'm not going to allow you to see death. I'm just going to allow you to be translated to be with me in glory. There are some blessings that God has for you that you don't even know that he's bringing your way. There are some blessings that God has for you that you don't even know is on its way. So what do I tell my fathers today? You stand strong. You don't give in. You serve the Lord with joy and gladness. You walk with them in the morning. You walk with them in the evening. You walk with them at the noonday. You raise up them children in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from that path. And if you find yourself with your hands out and your eyes up, say, Lord, this isn't fair. You just remember that eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard what the Son of Man has for those who serve him. You just make sure that you remember that the old folks said, Brother Oliver, there's a God who sits high and he looks low and he's concerned about the happenings of his people. So I tell you, I don't care what the news says, Sister Phyllis. I don't care what anyone else tells me. There's a whole cloud of witnesses right here watching us. And they are telling us to run on to see what the end is going to be. I don't know a whole lot about tomorrow, but I do know who holds tomorrow. I do know what I missed yesterday, but he said all things are past have become new. Fathers, and those who are missing your fathers, you own what your father showed you and told you. And if by chance he wasn't all that you wanted him to be, you look up and say, God, I thank you for being a daddy who loves me more than my daddy on earth is able to love me. Because half the time he didn't love me because he couldn't love himself. Half the time he couldn't love me because he couldn't love himself. And so that's why he passed it off on me. But I rebuke those feelings that you are trying, that those are trying to put on me. I'm going to remember that God is able. Yes to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can even ask or think. One of these days, I don't know if I'll be 300 years old. I don't know if I'll be 900 years old. I don't know if I'll even be 40 years old, but maybe the Lord might seem fit just to translate me up to glory. 
And then y'all won't be left with some of them tears. You'll say, I saw something today that I've never seen before. Houston just left here. And now we look up and say, I wonder if he's coming back again. Well, I tell you right now, there will come a day that every eye shall see him and he shall break through the clouds and we shall be changed in a twinkling of an eye for we shall be like him when we see him. So I'm not worried about what folks got to say about me. I'm glad I got this melanin in my skin. I'm happy that the Lord made me the way he made me. I'm happy my nose is wide. I'm happy my ears are big. I'm glad that I'm with who I am because God don't make no mistake. He knew who my daddy would be. He knew who my brothers would be. And now is the time. Oh, I'm sure. That's what happens when you miss a week of preaching, amen. I tell you, last week y'all got uh, Reverend Howard, but he took my time. I need my time. I go, let me tell you something. I go on vacation because y'all make me go on vacation. <laughs> If my wife didn't set it up, I wouldn't go. If y'all didn't get the brown envelopes, I'd just cry broke. I ain't got no money. I go on vacation because y'all say every, uh, Pastor, are you resting? Pastor, are you all right? Pastor, are you eating? Pastor, but let me tell you something. Even if I don't have enough, what I need, as long as I get some spam or something, it don't matter what it is. Got where Jesus said, I, my food is to do the will of the Father. So sometimes I'll be like Smitty right here. Smitty don't eat nothing but nuts and berries. <laughs> but he's still able to do what he can do because the Lord gives him strength. Sometimes I wonder, is Aaron going to make it another day? <laughs> That's enough for you. That's enough. Well, it's good. I'm gonna eat me some nuts and berries today. Well, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I invite you to come. He guides us in the way that we should go, the same way our fathers have done and will do. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I invite you to come. If you don't have a church home, I invite you to come. Now, one thing that you know about me, I'm never going to pressure you to join the church, the local church, that is. Why is that? <coughs> Two reasons. One, with membership comes responsibility. So if you're not ready for the responsibility, that's fine by me. Because with responsibility comes that we have to do some things. Two, I firmly believe that God is going to send who God would have to be here. It's just like when you're in a relationship. If you gotta always chase around somebody, right? Then you never know if they really into you or not. It's people that have been sending text messages late at night for three weeks. If they haven't written back, they don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> Say amen. amen. I just help someone else. I just help them again. But see, when the Lord and the Holy Spirit draws you, then I know that there's no power on earth that can break that. If the Spirit says come, then it's dangerous to say no. So I invite you to come join the church today. Last but not least, you want someone to pray with you, I invite you to come. Let us stand. Let us stand. We're going to practice something today. I want y'all to move out. There it is. Come on. There you Move out. There you got to get, 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 get close to them. You reach to them. There you go. There it is. There it is. There it is. Deacon Poe, you got to reach to them, Deacon. They reach to him. Come on out there. Go up there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, I like it. Reach to him. 
The doors of the church are open. Let the choir sing. Amen.